Virgo, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for late August 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card, just so we could dip our toes into energy and see what's happening for the lovely Virgo Collective in Virgo season, might I add. Beautiful time of year. Let's see what's happening. My guides, talk to me. What do we got for the Virgo Collective? Please, as their birthday season starts, what energies, messages, insights can we pull for our good friends? And yeah, we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. At the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot. Just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean in on, which is always interesting. But let's get it going here. Let's rock and see what we got for Virgo in late August. And while we get this first card out, I want to just wish you all a very happy birthday from me to you. Whether it's just a couple days away or even if it's in a couple weeks, I hope you have a fantastic birthday. Let's get this going for the Virgos, please. The deck is being particular already. Usually your cards pop out real quick when I start doing the shuffles. There it is. Okay, having a good time. Makes sense. Okay, and I often see this card pop up when people have either been taking things too seriously or they might just need to loosen up a little bit. Now, this could go the other way as well, like not having too much fun, but we'll see what's up with that. Usually, this is a very lighthearted way to start a reading, which is awesome. But before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the August subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye you know i'd greatly appreciate it but enough of the promo into the reading let's talk more about this card very whimsical type of imagery we have going on here we see that snow globe there's various like uh, toys there's this little pony or unicorn whatever it might be and to me it just speaks to having a good time and having fun so if in recent times you've been in hermit mode right like your card within the tarot deck, or you've been just minding your own business, I think you should absolutely make time to celebrate your birthday and have a good time. However that might be to you, everyone has fun in a lot of different ways. If you've been going through tough situations, serious things, this is spirit saying like, hey, you need to inject a little fun into your life. Do something that makes you happy, which is really good. Now, this can also swing in the other extreme. If, I mean, in recent times, you've been out there living it up a little too much, Spirit could be asking you to tighten it up a little bit. Have some fun, have a good time, but everything in a state of balance, okay? No judgment here, but we're just going to leave it at that. Let's put that card right there, and we're going to get into tarot. I always say this first card here it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. So let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Shuffle it up one time here for the lovely Virgos. While we get this deck shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled A Shocking Action. Lots of tower-like energy. So, I mean, it might be a little cautious in the coming days and weeks. There could be things changing quick. There could be people acting in ways that you don't expect. To me, it felt more like the people around you. That's what I was picking up last week. So just something to watch out for. But yeah, let's see what we have for you this week. As you know, energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone. So only take this how it hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone that you're linked to. Let's get it going. Three cards here for my Virgo friends, please. What's going on in the start of their birthday season? Thank you. And wands, huh? Someone's on guard there. Might be a little skeptical, a little guarded. We shall see. I mean, it makes sense with the energy that I was picking up last week. Let's get a couple more. And we'll really start piecing it together. For Virgo, please. There we go. Okay, high alert. Somebody might be on high alert when I see the nine of wands with the devil in the upper right. Okay. Let's get the, the last main card out before I really, because I, I don't want to be too skeptical myself, if that makes sense. Thank you. Queen of Swords. Yeah, this, wow. This must be something that I'm picking up in all the earth signs this week. There is a no BS mindset coming through. Okay, now, I mean, kind of links into like having fun and having a little bit of fun and lightening the mood a little bit. But I mean, if there's something that has you on edge or you're watching out for, 
I mean, it makes total sense to me, but let's go through. I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. But at first look, first glance, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of layers for us to peel back. Uh, we have some fire. We have some air, which could be very explosive. Now, the devil is earth energy right there in the center, but it does look like fire and brimstone. So just like on the feel and the imagery of it, I do feel like we have that fire-air mixture showing up, which could be a little unpredictable. But at the same time, I could talk about action and forward movement, which could be nice. Uh, this Queen of Swords is not messing around. Okay, like the, these two energies on the side are definitely the prescription for devil energy. That's for sure. But let's go through piece by piece and really start to build this out. Because I have a feeling this is going to be very layered. Now, for a portion of you, and maybe for even some cross watchers, there might be someone that you're dealing with. I don't want to say they're like super on edge or they're being like super high strung but i'm just getting that type of energy here but position number one we have the nine of wands the wounded warrior someone who's been through some things like this devil card right they've been through some things they don't want to go through it again i don't want to say this is someone that's scared it's just very cautious very particular they have their guard up now Every card has a positive and a challenge. The positives of this card, yes, it's territorial, but it's somebody protecting what's most important to them. Um, someone that's very alert. You're not going to get one by this Nine of Wands. Um, in its challenge, it could talk about somebody putting the walls up, communication issues. Um, someone, I don't want to say it's like they're being actively confrontational, but it's hard to get through to somebody when this energy is around. Okay, so it's something to just keep in mind. And sometimes it does come through as a bit of a warning from spirit saying like, hey, Virgo, just keep your wits about you, keep your mind about you. It just feels very cautionary right here on the front end. Now, moving to the center, and it makes sense, we have the devil. Everyone's been through these energies a time or two, right? Like it's part of the human experience. Um, the devil here, it could just be a Capricorn you're connected to. And I did feel it in the Capricorn reading too, like I'm not messing around type of energy. Um, they get this card to the goat symbolism. So if you're a Capricorn cross watching, don't be upset about it. It's just the symbolism. But the devil could mean a lot of different things. It could represent problems. It could represent really tough situations from time to time. Now, we could go down the whole checklist of what the devil could represent. It could be obsessions. It could be addictions. It could be toxic connections and toxicity in general. Um, so whether that, that's from within or it's from without, like this is a rough energy to deal with. But I always like to cast the big net and say that the devil is something that you could be very familiar with. This could be a situation that you've either been dealing with for a long time or one that's just taking a long time to resolve. So absolutely, we're looking at either like a serious situation or possible problem when the devil shows up. So we'll see. But as I mentioned earlier in the reading, I mean, I don't like having this energy around too much in your birthday season, but I mean, there's nothing we could really do. If it comes in, it comes in. The Nine of Wands and the Queen of Swords here on the back end are the recipe to curing this devil energy, that's for sure. Now, the Queen of Swords, could be an air sign you're connected to. So Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Straightforward, powerful, divine feminine energy. It's honest. It's clear cut. It's to the point. It's not messing around. I would say she shows up with serious situations or things that you should be taking seriously. There is no lying with the Queen of Swords. It is just brutally honest to a fault type of energy. And this could be a vibe that you're possibly stepping into. Now, the good thing about this energy is that, yes, it's strategic and it's seeing things clearly. You're not getting one past these two outside energies. When it comes to the challenge of the Queen of Swords, she can be a little harsh. She can be a little hurtful. But that's the vibe I was, I'm picking up already. Like with these two side energies, it's like, I'm, well, I'm not playing around. I'm not playing around. Like I'm not playing games. It's just very stern, very serious. So I feel like somebody could be on alert for one reason or another. But I want to dive deeper on all this, Virgo. Let's jump in and clarify. Let's get a good shuffle here for my Virgo friends. God, spirit team, what's happening? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. And I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that nine. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Virgo, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, nine of wands time. What is this wall? Thank you. 
Okay, so for a portion of you, watch out for any uh, situations revolving around money, what you do for a living. Um, this could absolutely be for a portion of you a focus on work and career. Now that doesn't have to be for every single Virgo, but when I see the eight of pentacles in reverse under the nine of wands, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to stop making action for the time being. I'm not going to put effort into something. It's like, I'm going to wait and see how it goes. Okay. So first I just can't let go of that message too, for a small portion of Virgos. There might be a work situation that kind of has you feeling a little trapped. Okay. I'm not saying you feel like you're trapped in a job per se, but it feels like a situation tied into money where it's like the walls are closing in a little bit, or it just feels stuck. Now, if that's not the case, once again, this eight of pentacles is usually a card of diligence, hard working, pouring energy into something. So when we see it in reverse, it's like, I'm going to stop giving energy to this. Okay. So when I see the nine of wands with this underneath it, there could be a situation, something or someone that you're like, you know what? I'm just not going to give my all or I'm not going to feed too much energy into it. So I actually get somebody. Yeah, there's that guarded energy I'm still picking up, but it's like I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to stop giving energy to it. And we're going to see how it goes. So remember, that could be how someone you're connected to is working as well. So we're just going to keep moving. Again, we're not going to get stuck here. I feel like it's very simple. Could be one of those messages. It could be both. But let's see why the devil's in the mix. I really want to get over to the Queen of Swords. Why is the queen here? For any of you, if you're having problems, maybe that could be a good solution, like trying your best not to feed energy into it, which is easier said than done. But let's see why the devil's here. Like the more you feed it, the stronger it's going to grow. It's a devil strain. Okay. So yeah, I do absolutely see a possible serious situation that a lot of you could be dealing with in this time. When I have strength underneath the devil, this is pointing at a very positive outcome for you, which is really nice uh, because this card, the strength card, is super angelic. Um, to me, it's a card of inner strength. It's a card of somebody with a great character. Um, when I see it in the upright under a card like the devil, it's like, yeah, the devil on one shoulder, the angel on the other. So for a portion of it, yeah, there might be something where you're, you're struggling with it a little bit or you're struggling with your approach. Like, all right, well, should I be passive about this or should I go scorched earth? I don't know why that's coming through the way it is. That's just how it feels to me. So whatever situations pop up, it's like, all right, I could listen to this one or I could listen to that one. It's like two very clear ways to figure something out. Now, for a portion of you, you might be connected to Leo here when the strength card is in the mix. But remember, it's angelic. It's somebody that has the strength to get through things. For a portion of you, if you have issues with temptation or if there's anything you've been purposely trying to hold back from or not give energy, there could be a very big temptation in this time to revert back to old ways. Okay, that's just something to keep in mind. Either that or somebody might be struggling in that way. So let's see what the Queen of Swords has to say. But yeah, first and foremost, I do feel like there could be like various serious situations you might be dealing with in this time. But I, I feel a good result. That's the one thing I like. So let's go in on the Queen of Swords and we'll get into the the shadow card after the recap. So why is that Queen of Swords in the mix? What is she doing here? For my beautiful Virgo friends. A lot of you could be overcoming something big as well. I like it. Thank you. Hermit. Yep. Stepping into that Queen of Swords energy. And, and just like what I saw in the Capricorn reading, I'm seeing it in yours as well. A very low tolerance for things. Okay. Now I know tons of beautiful Virgos and all the different earth signs in my personal life. And I know Virgos are usually very fair balanced types of individuals for the most part, at least the ones that I know. And when I see your card underneath the queen of swords, it might be a little harsher than normal. So you might be very quick to act or very quick to cut certain things off. Um, might be a little colder than normal too when we see this type of energy. Now, depending on what you're dealing with, that might be called for. You might need to take this Queen of Swords approach. But again, I feel a lot of Virgos having a very, very low tolerance for certain situations or BS in this time where it's like, you know what? Like if you're going to bring this devil energy to me, it, game over type of energy. Like I'm not messing around. I'm not playing around. I'm taking this very seriously. So if you're cross watching, know that anyone with this really strong Virgo placements, they could be stepping into this like uh, very strict types of energies. That's just what I'm picking up here. Okay. Um, for some of you, when I see the hermit underneath the queen of swords, aside from that message, some of you could be taking a little time to get your mind right. 
which could also be a really good thing. So let's let's go through and do a quick recap because a lot of things are coming through here. Only take what fits for you. But if you kindly look in the box before we get to the shadow. Position number one, we have the Nine of Wands Wounded Warrior with the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. I did say for a portion of you career-wise, there might be a certain work situation where you might feel either stuck or like cornered in a way where it's like, yeah, I'm not making a lot of progress here. So that's something to watch out for. But if everything's good with career and money, I do feel there could be a situation or something where you're going to stop feeding into it, where it's like, I'm going to purposely not feed into it. I'm not going to feed energy into it. And I do think that's a good way to go. Moving to the center, we have the devil with the strength card in the upright. So I did feel that like devil on one shoulder, angel on the other with this mixture. So, I mean, it can be two very different ways of handling a situation. And I do feel whatever it is you might be dealing with now, there could be a very positive result in the end. But to me, it's like I could take the passive route or I could be a little more aggressive here. Um, and also, if there's something you've been refraining from, uh, you might be tempted to revert. Moving to the back end, we have the Queen of Swords with your card, the Hermit in the upright. No games, no nonsense type of energy. So you might be much stricter in this time than you normally are. And I do think that's a good energy to be in for the time being. And I said, it, it feels very quick to point out things that are a little fishy. And if something's too fishy, it's like I'm not playing games, game over type of vibe. So yeah, Virgo, please take a screenshot of that if you'd like. Let's see what's in the shadows. Now that very first card makes sense, right? When I was talking about needing to have a little bit of fun, right? In the very beginning, then this really strong, serious energy rolls through through most of the reading. But yeah, I always like to pull one shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing. So let's get you one. What do we have in the shadows for Virgo? <laughs> And yes, if you made it to this point in reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it down in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, let's get this shadow card going. What is in the... Sh Thank you. Nice and quick. The chariot, aggressive, and like have kind of been picking that up. Now for a portion of you, maybe this is someone you're connected to, where it's like they have a little edge to them or act on a little meaner. Now the chariot could represent a cancer, cancerian type of energy. It's very fast. It's forward movement. It's momentum. So for a lot of you, whatever situations you might be dealing with, this could literally be representing, representing it like pass and quick. Like this will pass. This too shall pass type of energy, which could be really good. But again, the chariot is just full of determination and it's aggressive. So I'm kind of picking up that vibe from all the earth signs this week. You guys might have an edge to you and you might be more aggressive to, I don't know if it's like pushing your agenda or just like what you're going to deal with. I just feel an edge to you. Okay. It feels like fire sign energy to me. For a portion of you, this could be a spontaneous trip. I know that's completely out of left field, but the chariot could represent distance and travel. So for some of you, you might be just taking a spontaneous one. That might be good for you. Okay. Especially with the vibes we're seeing, like switch it up a little bit. But yeah, Virgo, that's what I have for you this week. My beautiful friends, don't click away just yet though. I'm going to give you the details of the August subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. And for the July subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this week's fire and air readings. But for the August subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful Gilded Tarot Royale, one of my favorite decks ever. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments if you could time travel. Would you rather go into the past to meet your ancestors or would you rather go into the future to meet your descendants? You'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in my community tab. As always, my friends, much love and I'll see you soon.